What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean, and today we're comparing the RTX 3070 and 4080 laptop GPUs across 10 different games and benchmarks. You may be wondering why I'm comparing a 3070 and 4080 in the first place instead of maybe like a 3070 and 4070, but there's a lot of comparisons like that already out there, and this year Nvidia kind of moved the positions a little bit by adding the 4090. So while the 3070 was the kind of one step down from the top when it launched, now the 4080 is the one step down laptop. And if you have a 3070 laptop, maybe you're thinking about upgrading to a 4080 and you want to know what kind of difference you can expect. And well, that's why I'm doing these tests. This newer model does have more overclocking features, so to keep things more level, I'm running them both on the performance mode, not custom, and with no additional overclocks. For the first test, let's jump into 3 d Mark Time Spy and get a general idea of how these perform. Now different generation laptops are going to have different generation CPUs, so there's also going to be CPU performance differences between these two. For that reason, I'm only really going to look at the graphics score here in Time Spy. The RTX 3070 came in with an overall score of 10,670 with a graphics score of 10,854. The 4080 came in with an overall score of 17,228 and a graphics score of 17,934. So coming in at almost 18,000 on the graphics compared to 10,000 on the 3070, this 4080 has an almost 65% lead in the graphics performance, at least in Time Spy. Next, to get an idea of difference in ray tracing performance, I ran the Port Royal benchmark, also from 3 d Mark. The 3070 came in with a 6489 in Port Royal, and the 4080 got 11,267. That's a big leap. That's around a 70% increase for the 4080 over the 3070. Next up, we got Cyberpunk 2077. And in this one, on the Ray Tracing Ultra DLSS quality preset, the 3070 came in with 37 frames per second, and the 4080 came in with 74. So that's about exactly a 100% increase in performance. Then if we turn on DLSS 3 with frame generation, which is only available on the 40 series, we get an average frame rate of 99, so that makes it a 167% jump over the 3070. Cyberpunk is obviously one of the more graphically demanding games that's available right now, but those are pretty stark differences. Now for Red Dead Redemption 2, and we're running this on 1600p on the high settings with DLSS off and the 4080 came in with an average of 109 frames in the benchmark, and the 3070 came in with 73 frames per second. So that's about a 49% difference in favor of the 4080 in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now we have Forza Horizon 5, again running on 1600p, and this is at the Ultra preset with no DLSS, and the 3070 came in with an average of 90 frames per second, which is a pretty good experience, but the 4080 came in with 127. And at 127 frames per second, the 4080 is coming in about 41% faster than the 3070 in Forza Horizon 5. Next we have the Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker benchmark, and this is an MMORPG, so it's not one of the more graphically demanding games, and there could be situations in this benchmark where the CPU differences are going to be making a difference, but that is just kind of how it goes with laptops. 3070 came in with an overall score in the benchmark of 14,526, and the 4080 came in with 22,612, so that's about a 55% advantage in favor of the 4080. Next was the Far Cry New Dawn benchmark, and this is also a game that can be pretty CPU intensive. The 3070 managed to put out 85 frames per second on average, which is pretty decent, but the 4080 did 132 frames per second. That's another 55% advantage for the 4080. Next we have the lightweight shooter Strange Brigade, and running the benchmark at 1600p on ultra settings, the RTX 3070 laptop did 146 frames on average, while the 4080 did 220, making this another 50% win for the RTX 4080 laptop. Okay, this next one got kind of messy, it's Watch Dogs Legion. And on the RTX 3070 laptop, running this at 1600p ultra, with the ray tracing on ultra, and DLSS on quality, it killed the VRAM. The 3070 only has 8GB of VRAM, and since it needed more than that, it was just done. It was stuttering, uh, it was slow, and it only came in with an average of 19 frames per second. On those same settings, the 4080 did 48 frames per second, which is much more respectable, and it was noticeably smoother because it wasn't spiking and stuttering from running out of VRAM. 
After that, I dropped the settings to very high and I dropped the ray tracing to high. And with those settings, the 3070 managed to come in with a 37 frames per second average, whereas the 4080 did 61 frames on those same settings. So originally, when it was only 19 frames per second versus 48, we had a 152% advantage for the 4080. However, knocking it down to high and high ray tracing makes that a 64% advantage. So this is still really struggling, but it's not the total decimation that was happening at the higher settings. If you really want to get a more playable type of frame rate on the 3070, you're going to want to drop to the high, very high settings high ray tracing, and then run DLSS on balanced. And doing that, we were able to get 64 frames on here. Around the 4080, even dropping to quality DLSS, not balanced, we still managed to get 89 frames per second. So even though running the same settings, this on balanced DLSS and this on quality DLSS, this was still 37% faster. It may not be as direct of a comparison as a 4080 versus 3080 or 4070 versus 3070, but again, these are both the one model from the top GPUs. And a lot of people who had one of these may be thinking about upgrading to one of these. And so if you are, or if you are just interested in the performance difference, I hope this video was helpful. You know, it's not sponsored by anybody. So if you want to help us out, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, and I'll catch you in the next one.